we we know his name we know his name his name is marvelous we know his name we know his name we know his name his name is wonderful we know his name we know his name we know his name his name is wonderful we know his name i know his name i know his name his name is powerful i know his name i know his name i know his name his name is wonderful i know his name i know his name i know his name his name is wonderful i know his name i know his name i know his name his name is powerful i know his name we know his name but all you need to say we know his name his name is marvelous we know his name we know his name we know his name his name is powerful we know his name i know his name i know his name his name is wonderful. His name is powerful. I know his name. His name is excellent. His name is powerful. His name is wonderful. I know his name. I know, I know. I know his name. I know his name. His name is wonderful. I know his name. I know his name. We know his name. His name is powerful. We know his name. Yes, we know his name. We know his name. His name is excellent. His name is wonderful. We know his name. We know his name. We know his name. His name is wonderful. We know his name. We know his name. We know his name. His name is wonderful. His name is powerful. His name is excellent. I know his name. His name is mighty. His name is wonderful. I know, I know, I know, I know his name. I know his name. I know his name. His name is powerful. I know his name. We know his name. We know his name. We know his name. His name is powerful. We know his name. We know his name. We know his name. His name is powerful. We know his name. 
I know his name. I know his name. We know his name. His name is majesty. We know his name. We know his name. We know his name. His name is wonderful. We know his name. We know his name. We know his name. We worship him. We give him all the glory. We know his name. Oh, yes, I know his name. I know his name. His name is powerful. I know his name. Oh, his name is wonderful. I know his name. We know his name. We know the name, the name above every other name, the name above every trial. We know his name. We know his name. We know his name. His name is majesty. We know his name. Yes, we know his name. Yes, we know his name. His name is powerful. We know his name. Yes, his name is glorious. We know his name. Yes, his name is wonderful. We know his name. I don't know about you, but I know his name. I don't know about you, but I know the name that is powerful. I know the name that is wonderful. I know the name that is excellent. I know the name that is placed above every other name. And I am glad to know that I know this name. I am happy to know that I know this name. His name is powerful. His name is marvelous. His name is great, is great, is great, is great. So before we can continue today, um, I'm just going to go ahead and invite his presence because we can definitely go nowhere in this particular sermon without his name, without invoking his presence. So Jehovah Shammah, Jehovah Nisi, I honor you for you are the God that I know. But I honor you for you are the God far above principalities. There is none like thee in all the earth. I gave you the glory. I gave you the adoration because you alone deserve it. I love that word. So you guys don't be surprised if I have a baby and name the baby adoration. Father God, I gave you all the adoration that you desire, that you deserve. So... We are, we are going to be talking about a topic that um, is very touching and is very, is very important to us today. So I, before I even go any further with this, I want to give you a definition of the word um, idol. Idol is something, an image or a representation of God's you know, used as an object of worship. So an idol is something that an individual can elevate in their own throne room, in their own throne, in their own life as a, a thing of worship. Yes. So before I even give you my title, before I even give you my, my team, I'm just going to have you open up to the book of Exodus. We are going to be looking at the book of Exodus. We are going to be looking at the book of Exodus, um, Exodus 20. So then Exodus 20, we are looking at what did God say to Moses? Okay, just the, the first, the first um, glance of it. And I will just pause and then I'll give you the team and then we'll just dive into it. So may God bless you. So, and God spoke all these words saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. 
thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the, the, the waters under the earth. Thou shalt not bow thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, I am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children, <clears throat> upon the children to the third and the fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. I hope you got that. So God is saying to Moses in this that um, you shall not worship any other God. There will be no image placed before me. There will be no form of worship placed before me. Any other, any other thing, crawling, creeping, whatever it is, there will be no of these things placed before me, okay? Because I am a God that is jealous. I am a jealous God. I, the Lord, your God, I am a jealous God. So I do not, I do not, and I repeat myself, I do not want you to put other gods before me. Because when you do, I am a God that will visit them from generations, wait, I even interpreted it in the English standard for other people I didn't understand. And God spoke all these words. I am the Lord, your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on earth beneath in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, I am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sins of the parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who hate me. Okay? But showing love to thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. Hallelujah. So, I, 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 I just want to start her by saying Many of us today come from all sorts of culture. We come from many different parts of the world. And because we are, we are diverse in our origin, because we are diverse in our origin, we, we begin, we, 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 are, we, are, we, we are, I don't even know how to put it. We are objected to worshiping idols in the time that we were born, in our time of origin, in our time of beginning. Because once a child is, 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 is born, whatever you see the parents doing, you think it is right. It looks right to you. It's, it's, it's beautiful because that's all you know. You were born, you came out of the cradle of your mother's womb. And then once you're out, you come into a place where you see that everybody there go to a water to sit at that water for one hour every day, paying obeisance and saying, oh, thank you. Oh, water of my, my fathers. Oh, waters of my mother. Thank you for all you do for me. Thank you. And you, 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 you just, you are grounded into that tradition because you feel as if um, that's the normal way to life because you, you were born into that tradition. How many of us are coming from a, 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 a tradition where we are told that our forefathers worship serpents in the sea? So once we, we, we gather our corpse in the villages like I'm talking about in the rural areas now, when people farm, when the people hunt, the every first fruit of what they get out of their hard work, they take it to that water and say, oh, you serpent of my mother's village, you serpent of my father's generation, I came to pay obeisance to you because of all the things that you have done for me. You find that to be a way of comfort. You find that to be a way to life because you, you were born in that tradition. You knew nothing else. You knew no other God. You knew no other religion. So I do not blame you. 
Some of you are even a uh, victim of worshiping spoons. A spoon is very big spoon that is standing in front of you that says nothing to you. I cannot move an arm. I cannot move a, a leg. I cannot even blink an eye. But you are worshiping this spoon. All Asian school of my family, family, we have been known that you are a school mighty in battle. We came to worship you. Oh, please do not disappoint me. Give me the blessings of my life. Oh my God. It is so even bad to a point where people can travel abroad and then they, they, they leave from abroad and go back to their hometown just to pay obedience for this particular stone. I do not blame you because why you grew up knowing that tradition and knowing that form of worship. Some of you are victim of animal worship. Forget about the serpent that I spoke about. Some of you, they, they tell you in your family, the things that bring blessings, the things that bring blessings and joy is to worship a very big cow or a very big a horse in the bush. So every time you get something, the first thing you think about is um is um going back to this um cow or this hearse to go and worship it. I don't blame you because, like I said, you were born into that tradition, and that is what you know. And because they say, for lack of the Bible say, for lack of knowledge, my people perish. So because you are lacking certain amount of knowledge, you have to perish in some way because you were you weren't taught the right thing. So what is wrong look right to you? And even now, let's come to uh, modern day worship. Modern day, modern day idol worship. Now in modern day, I wrote down, people can be worshiping marriages. For example, in a modern day marriage, you will be worshiping that, that significant order in your marriage because you expect this person to be perfect because you heard that marriage is supposed to be um, perfect at all time. You heard that nobody's supposed to do anything wrong. Everybody's going to be straight. And everything will be fine. So now you 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 worship this marriage, and once you worship this marriage, once things don't go your way or the way that you expect, what happens? You are bound. You are bound to begin to probably get a divorce or maybe leave this husband of yours or this wife of yours because what you have been taught in your tradition of marriage is not working. But you idol you idolize that marriage in your mind. You idolize it in your mind. So in modern day, marriage become an idol for some people. Marriage become an idol for some people. Believe it or not. Marriage become an idol for some people. Yes. Oh, thank you so much, uh, beautiful. So marriage become an idol for some people in our modern day life. So now, like I said, if you, you, if, you, if you are not careful because of your expectation has been cut short, when you expect a, a very straight person, a person that won't get mad, a person that won't cheat, a person that won't lie, a person that won't fling maybe your hand or two or throw something at you. And one day when it happened, you said, no, this is not what I, I was told that marriage is supposed to be. Marriage is supposed to be a paradise where I'm supposed to get out every morning, breakfast is served in bed, and I'm supposed to be having the best time of my life. But in this marriage, I have a husband who has an upper Opportunity of getting upset, I have a wife who have an opportunity of not having a good mood when she gets up from sleep. So you worship that marriage, and if you're not careful, you end up with divorce because you have idolized it and it didn't work up to your expectation. Another thing that is is, is identified as modern day idol worship is um, how do I call it? Is uh money. Money is good, don't get me wrong. Money is good, money is wonderful. You need money to be able to live. You need money to pay your rent. You need money to pay your cell phone bills. You need money to buy data to get online and talk to your favorite people and check them out and see how they are doing and send them hugs and kisses. But once you make money an idol in your life, you don't care for the things that matters the most to you in your life. Do you understand? Some people can put money be, be above everything, meaning that if they have to work. They will work and work and work and work, and they forget that they have a family to take care of. They forget that they have a family that needs also their attention. Even though money is good, even though you have to pay your rent. But once you pay your rent, 
you have money to pay your rent and stuff, you can make out time for your family. But once money becomes an idol for you, you tend to lose the most significant things that matters to you in your life. Meaning you put, I'm going to go look for money. I'm going to go look for money. You put it on your forehead. You forget that your kids need to spend time with you. You forget that your wife needs to spend time with you. You forget that your husband needs to spend time with you. And you are out there working, 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 working. When it happens like that, only one thing you are going to enter with your family that matters so much to you, walking away. They are going to walk away. And then once they walk away, you are left with money, but you don't have happiness. We are talking about modern day idol worship because scripture spoke against idol worship because our God said he's a God that is, he's a jealous God. He don't like for us to worship idols. Well, I'm speaking to you right now about idols, where they start from and what are the modern days idols that we have in our life. People don't think they, they are worshiping money, but they do. Another modern day worship that I wrote down, another modern day idol worship is success success is good when you make it it's awesome when people love you out then they celebrate you out there hey i'm a gospel artist and i love it and i like to see people follow me and they, oh i love that's my favorite person oh i love her music i like that but you don't allow success to get to your head because once success gets to your head you are always thinking that you should always be up there you should never come down any day there will never be a rainy day for you in your successful life so you are you carry a high horse once you carry a high horse and expect that you're supposed to be out there all the time, up there all the time, and one day when rainy day comes, you don't know how to handle it because you were busy worshiping your success that you have. I hope I'm talking to somebody. You were busy worshiping the success that you have. You did not pay attention to what if this happened? What if this comes? What if something like this happens, something drastic? You did, not, you did not look for a way to be able to handle bad situations when you are successful. What, is, what, what I'm trying to even drive out is when people are successful, they don't mind how to spend money. They don't make plans for tomorrow. They don't make plans for, okay, I have a family. I need to put money here. They just go, you know, spend money to squander it. And then when things get tough, um, they fall right down flat. So when success is not well handled, even though you are idolizing it, you can end up becoming a failure because why? You did not handle success very well when it came to you. Another thing that we, we, we have today in modern day idol worship is um, approval. When I say, once I say approval, I mean that once you live your life worshiping the approval of others about you, you live your life thinking that, oh, I really care what Anita says about me. Anita said my, high, my eyes is ugly. Oh, Juliet said my mouth doesn't look right. Oh, my uh, uh, Mary Ann said that my eye doesn't open right. Oh, John told me the other day I am not a good person. And then you focus on that because you are so much focused on what people think about you that you forget about yourself, or who you are, the abilities you hold, what you are able to do. So modern day worship, you worship the approval of men. You worship the approval of your friends. You worship the approval of your, uh, your husband, your wife, this, that. You need to put yourself, it's good, don't get me wrong, for people to make suggestions to you, for people to say, oh, I think you are like this. I think that you can do this. You can appreciate somebody for making a positive comment in your life and saying something to you and say, you know what? Um, I appreciate you know for what you say to me. Thank you. But you don't have to idolize it because once you idolize negative things that people say about you, the only thing that happens, you become a failure. I hope I'm speaking to someone. The only thing that happens, take it from your daughter, take it from your sister, take it from your mother this night or this morning, wherever you are, you are watching me. The only thing that happens when you think so much about the approval of men, the approval of people out there about who you are and what you are and what you can be, you, be, you, you make that approval a worship. And God said, don't worship idols. Do not worship idols. He, he frowned against it. He frowns against it. God, the approval of God is what should matter to you. 
So be prayerful. When people say, oh, I think you talk this way and I think you can do better if you talk this way. You say, okay, thank you. I appreciate you for telling me that. And um, I say, thank you for the courage that you summed up to tell me because not everybody can tell people what they think about them. Thank you. And that's fine. But it doesn't mean you should idolize it and put it in your mind that you are not a good person. You are not a good talker. You are not a good worker. You are not a good wife. You are not a good husband. You are not a good child. You are not a good student. You are not a good minister. You are not a good person in totality. Because once you idolize it, you begin to think negative the more, and then what? You feel. So that is right there. So we heard God said specifically to Moses, I don't want them to worship other gods. I don't want them to worship other gods. They should worship me. If they love me, I will love them beyond expectation. But those that hate me, I will hate them from third to fourth generation to come. And I don't want you to fall victim to that. I hope you're listening to me. Some of you, once you are facing some trials in your life, somebody will call you like this from Africa. Hey, Juliet. When you say what is going on there? Oh, um, they say they wanna, they wanna, they wanna fire me, and um, uh, I, I, I don't know what to do. They say you must pay your ticket and come to Africa. Pay your ticket and come to Africa, and and I will take you somewhere. A form of idol worship. Why are you showing a God that shows you love, that shows you everything that you need, in gratitude of this uh, uh, extent? Why are you? Sometimes you stop yourself. Sometimes you think some of you will spend money, amounts of money and go to Africa to go in places where people are, 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 are you know, to go in places where people are, 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 are in dirty places, you know, inside the bushes, in the, the, the dangerous places that you could probably get infections from. You go there. Because somebody said there is one guy that is seated behind the mountains that he's able to do it. You forget to know this guy that you're going to were created by your God, Makadash. You forget to know that this guy that you paid $2,000 to go to was created by your God. So no matter the problems that you are having in your life, you are able to put it before him. You know, researchers, when I was, I was doing some research, they said they, they, they consider idol worship as spiritual spiritual um infidelity to god spiritual unfaithfulness to god because god is faithful to us he's so faithful to us he does everything that we want he gives us our heart desire once we believe in him but we are unfaithful on so many accounts we are unfaithful on so many accounts we are so unfaithful that is why i was reading when I was reading, I said, oh, somebody need to hear this. And then he said, anything you elevate to the throne of your life becomes an idol. Anything you elevate to the throne of your life becomes an idol that is more than your God. It becomes an idol. Anything that you elevate to the throne of your life. Because God is the one above there. Nobody else should be there. And I came to tell you that today. Maybe some of you did it out of ignorance. That is why when I was starting, I said some of you grew up in cultures where people were known to just worship elephants. And you, you because you did not have any knowledge that elephants shouldn't be worshipped, and an elephant is not a god that created you, an elephant or a rat or a, a snake or a water or a mountain or, you know, uh, or a big tree that's standing in the middle of the forest. It's not a thing that you should worship. You should be worshiping God. I do not blame you for it because you didn't have the knowledge. And scripture say a lack of knowledge make my people to perish. So now I came to give you the knowledge and what God is saying about these things. The fact that you can even leave from the, the biggest city that you live to go in the rural parts of your village, to go and start seeking solences of rocks. Seeking solences of trees, seeking solences of waters, seeking solences of, 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 of animals. There is something wrong. There is something wrong somewhere. You should never elevate anything to the throne of your life beside God. Your creator, that you were created in his image. You should never elevate a human being, a, an object, a car. You understand? Money, material things, material possession before your God. 
because he said it to you. I am a jealous God. You showed me love, I will show you love. Those that hate me, I will show them hatred to the third and fourth generations. So are you ready? Are you really wanting to show, you know, wickedness to your father? I came to talk to you. Maybe you might be doing, you might be idol worshiping and you don't know that you are doing it. Some people can make alcohol their idol. You worship alcohol. In a sense, you put alcohol above anything that matters to you in your life. Some people can, can, can idolize their friends. They idolize their friends that they prefer to be in the presence of their friends than in the presence of the Lord. Are you getting me? Are you getting me? Many of us come from cultures where we grew up knowing that whatever our parents teach us is what should be worshipped. It's what we should worship. But I came to talk to you at this hour, and I hope this message will sink in. I, I hope this message, because that is why I kind of read the English part of it, you know, so that we left in the King James and then we went to the English standard. So you can understand what God is saying to you. The fact that you get up and you, maybe the fact that God has blessed you with a lot of children, does not mean you should idolize your children. You idolize the children in a sense that you expect them to be perfect. So you spend your whole time looking at them. Nothing else should they do that is wrong. And when something happens wrong, your expectations are cut off and there is anger that leads to sin. You understand? So I came to amplify the word of God again to some of you. Maybe some of you might not have had the opportunity to understand that God has said, we should not worship other gods. If I be your mother, don't worship me. I'm not an object of worship. You don't worship me. Every glory belongs to God. And maybe you're not a Christian, so it's kind of new to you. You don't understand what I'm saying to you. Then you come closer, then you will know God for yourself. Then you understand what the Christianity, what the religion is. A day is coming where I'm going to tell you guys about the beginning of Christian, uh, uh, Christianity and the beginning of Islam. We are going to be discussing that. Okay, but I just came today because it's, it's so rampant in our time. It's so rampant in our time that people worship, they place other things, material things before the God that we serve. The God that you're looking for, the God you're looking for, everywhere in the world, he's up there. The God that you're seeking in the rocks, in the bushes, in the, in the, in the, in the river's bank, in the, in the darkest parts of this world. You are risking your life. He's up there. And you just need to confess your sins and get closer to him. Because he already died for your sins. Once you, you know, in modern day idol worship, once people worship uh, money, like if they worship money, they can go to any ascent because of the love of money. Because they have made money their idol. So they must have money, no matter what, regardless of what they do. If they have to steal, they will steal because they need money. Because they have made money an idol in their life. If they have to prostitute their bodies, they will do it because what they have made money their idol. If they have to go out there and, and, and sacrifice somebody spiritually just because they must have money, they will do it because what? They have idolized money in their life. So once you idolize money and money has maybe lost away from you in some kind of way, you haven't seen it for some time, you go to an extent that leads to sin. So I came today to talk to you. Are you an idol worshiper? Are you an innocent idol worshiper? Because an innocent idol worshiper will fall in a category of a person being birthed in a generation that, did not, that, that don't know that they are believers of idol worship and they are worshiping idol. And you get up every morning, you think that it's a normal life for you. You get up in the morning, you guys go to Ravers Banks and you guys pay obeyance to serpents in the sea. You don't know. You think it's right. You think it's the right thing to do. So you go and you have spent all your life. You have spent all your life doing this. You have spent all your life doing that. So are you an innocent idol worshiper? Ignorant idol worshiper. There is still room for you at the throne. Or are you, are you a deliberate idol worshiper? 
Meaning that you know that God spoke these words to Moses and it comes to us today in our generation that we are not to worship idols. But when you get in a situation, once you are faced with a problem, somebody calls you off from Ghana, somebody calls you off from Ivory Coast, somebody calls you off from Liberia, somebody calls you off from Uganda, somebody calls you off from Cameroon, from, from Congo, and say, what is going on there? You say, oh, I lost my job. Oh, I, I, they want to fire me. They say, calm down. And you pay the, the most expensive money and you go. And some of you, you are even in Africa, you are living in cities area, in the, in the city parts of where you live. And somebody, and some, something happened and they say, um, you call somebody, maybe your friend in a village or your mom in a village, and you explain it, she say, come home. What are you going home for? When the God you're looking for lives inside of your heart. When this, the problem solver lives inside of your heart. Where, what are you going home for? Are you going to a God that will promise and at the end of the day demand more than you are, you are able to give? What are you going home for? Are you going to a God that will, that will give and, and trick you and give and then take later on double portion of what he gave to you? What really are you going home for? What really is your aim for, for looking for the dirtiest parts of this war? The rockiest road of this war, the deepest part of this earth, the waters, and going there. I only heard about a time that sea opened for, for, for the children of God to pass. That was when Moses were taking the children of Israel, uh, the, the U.S., they were taking them from Egypt. Do you understand? And once they got to the, the, the wilderness, God told Moses to do some, some thing. And he said, open, and the seed opened, and they went through. Some of you have the brave minds to be invited to some places where people have the capacity to open river banks and they say you should walk in the middle of it. It will become sin and you go. Do you know where you are going? Do you know if you return again? Do you even know there's a possibility that you will return? Do you know where you are going? Listen, there was a, 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 a young girl that called me and said, Sis Marilyn, there's a story going on here in um, I think it was Liberia. She said there is there was a there was a a, a a club of initiation that people go to for work to get money. And once they go there, um, what is happening is that you must carry with you a check-in of some sort. So once you go there, whatever they, they put a grains, they put grains of rice on the floor. So what, whatever how many the amount grains of rice that chicken eats. Is the time you will enjoy riches for, riches for, and then um, you will live. If the chicken ate 10 years, glory be to God, you will be living for 10 years and you will enjoy the worth. You, you are worshiping chicken. Chicken is what you worship. Your life is now chicken. And she explained a story about a guy that went there and carried a chicken. And he made sure he kept the, the, he kept the chicken very hungry. Once the chicken was hungry, what did he do? He took the chicken. And guess what? To his utmost surprise, because he thought this chicken would be eating the, the most part of this rice because he's hungry. The chicken carry one grain of rice, that was it. The chicken did not eat any other thing but the one grain of rice, and that was it. And the guy was begging the chicken to eat and eat, and there was no way. So he, he left from there. He left from there. You know what I mean? He left from there. and. He could not sleep. He was worried in his spirit. He was worried in his mind. How possible is it that I am going to be living for only one year? I will enjoy riches and I will have money upon money. But I'm only going to be living for one year. For what reason? Why God? Why my own have to be different? And because of fear, because he was, he was uneasy in his spirit, I know it was God that made him uneasy this way. And he ran to the church to confess what has happened in secret places. So I came to reassure you, idols that you worship, idols that you worship end up to, end up to destroy your children in time to come. Idols that you, that, you, that you amplify in your life end up to destroy the destinies of your children to come. I want to tell you, I myself coming from a background 
of idol worshippers. I'm not ashamed to say that. I myself, coming from a background of idol worshippers, I can tell you that you are putting your children at stake. You are putting their life at stake, in a sense. Some people go to the rivers to pay obeyance. And they, 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 the mothers that go to pay obeyance to the rivers and the serpents in these waters, once you pay obeyance to them, you think that you are telling them thank you for giving you blessings, for, for protecting you, for giving you everything. At the end of the day, what is going to happen? Two, three years, your daughters have marital problems. Do you know what is happening in the realm of the spirit? That's because those gods have married your children spiritually. They have become husbands for your children. And your children cannot have, they cannot have an opportunity of getting a good marriage for themselves. Only because you did not heed to the warnings of the Lord that said, do not worship idols. I am a jealous God. I don't like my children to worship idols. God is a parent for each and every human being. And a father and a mother lay out the rules for their children to follow so they don't walk into temptation. Do you get me? I hope you are getting me. Once you carry libations and you pull it to, 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 um, to what do you call it? Oh, trees that are standing, that carry some sort of, some sort of force, some sort of force in them some sort of spirit in them and you pull libations you don't know that that tree have the ability capacity to get married to your daughters to get married to your sons you see you see some of you your children are always misbehaving some of you your children are always angry always fighting some of you your children Fall victim to breaks up in their life, break up in a relationship because what? Something you did physically is manifesting spiritually because what? You did not adhere to the word of God. I came today to tell you to denounce idol worship. I came today to tell you that idol worship is no form of pleasantries. That idol worship is deadly. I came specifically to tell you that, to tell you that. You know, those days our parents worship idols because they weren't open to the, the, the Christian religion, okay? Our parents were worshiping other gods then because they weren't told about Christ. That time, nobody, no missionary reached out to them to speak the word of God to them. So all they knew, they grew up in a village, they grew up in a town, they grew up in a city, a city where they know that the solution to their problem is idol worship. They must go to the sea and call the mother serpent to give her blessing so that she can be able to carry children. I want to share a story. A story from the Ivy Coast. A friend of mine told me that there was a lady that didn't have a child and they carry a village where once you need to have a child, you go there, you, you speak to the water and, and they, they carry fish, fishes, fishes from, the, from the water and you cook, you eat and you give birth. But what are you giving birth to? Are you giving birth to the fish? Or what are you giving birth to? What kind of a spirit have you invited into your generation? Because not even into you alone, because it is your generation to come. Because that spirit, that fish that you worship, that you went to the sea to take one of this child to carry in your belly, that fish has become an idol in your family. It's become an idol in your family because for time and time to come, that child you gave birth to will give birth to another child. The spirit will continue to bear fruit. It will continue to bear fruit. It will bear fruit. And you will see that sometimes there will not be, there will not be straight things in the life of these children. Your generation becomes a cursed one, a, a caged one, a generation full of bondage because of what you invited into your life. Because what? You did not hear the word of God that said, don't worship idols. I am a God that is jealous. 
If you worship idols, I will bring hatred, I will bring punishment onto the third and fourth generation. That is what your God said. You know, if you haven't heard it before, and if you're new to Christianity, just by looking at me now, you're just hearing about Christianity, I want to enlighten your mind that our God frowns seriously against idol worship. And you need to give your life to Christ if you haven't. If you feel that you need a solution solver, you need a problem solver, and you are struggling because you don't have a problem solver, that is why you go to worship these idols, then you need to take it from me and say that you have come to the right place. And all you need to do is just open your mouth and say, God, have mercy on me. I came to denounce every, uh, 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 every idols that I have worshipped over the years. Come in me that I will grow to know you for who you are. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. But I don't want you to cage your generation with your own heads. Because a cage generation is is a drastic and a deadly generation. A cage generation, a generation filled with bondage is a generation is very dangerous. So I came to tell you, I came to lift up. These are, these are little scriptures we pass by. Oh yeah, the, corn, the Ten Commandments say, and that should not worship any other God. Oh yeah, so mm, don't look at any image and you pass by it. But you don't know the significance of the words. The words are important, but you don't know the significance of it. You make nothing of it. There is, there is, they carry weight. They carry weight. It's just like me saying to you or the law right now saying, don't drink and drive. Every citizen of this time should not drink and drive. Well, since you have idolized, you, are, you, are, you have idolized alcohol as your idol in your life, you still carry drink and drive. And the repercussion is what? Dangerous, deadly accident that affects your, your, your state of mind as a person. Some of you get in accidents and you, you can never walk again, my God. Some of you get in accident because of alcohol, you can never speak again, my God. Some of you get in accident because of alcohol, you can never open those eyes that God gave you again. Because what? You idolize it. You idolize it in your life. So I came specifically this evening, this morning, whatever it is by your time, take it from me. God gave me the message for you. He said, amplify and echo this word to somebody that cared to listen. That cared to listen. In ancient days, our parents were worshiping serpents. In ancient days, our parents were worshiping water gods and rivers. In ancient days, our parents were worshiping trees. Our parents were worshiping, they were worshiping uh, animals. They were worshiping spoons. Okay? And, and, and because of those worship that they did naively, in ignorance, out of ignorance, we also, that spirit has been transferred to our generation. And we are eager to worship idols. We are just eager to worship idols. We are eager. Sometimes you don't know why you do it, but you do it. You don't know why you do it because there is a spirit in the lineage that your mother accepted in that family already. There is a spirit in the family that your father accepted in that family already. So it must take church, when generation changes, it will come back and, and appear in a different form. Instead of you worshiping trees, instead of you worshiping rocks, instead of you worshiping rivers, instead of you worshiping snakes in the rivers, instead of you worshiping animals in the bush, you are worshiping money, you are worshiping your marriages, you are worshiping the approval of men, you are worshiping success. Some of you are even worshiping sex. You know what I mean? So I came today that you will denounce 
idol worship. I want you to denounce it. Get closer to God. Get closer to God. As I was writing, many of us come from cultures where we grew up knowing whatever our parents do, it just seemed right. Okay? And, 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 and whatever we see and we think is right that they are there, whatever we see them worshiping, we begin to worship it. But I think so you will have a renewal of your mind today. Okay? A renewal of your mind. And as you see me, I am carrying the, the banner over my head. I decided to carry this banner. I said, I must break this curse in my family. I must break the spirit of idol worship in my family. I put my finger up to be a chosen generation that God will use to break the idol worship in my family, in my generation. And I want you to do the same because God has already appointed you. He is calling you out to be the one to break and end idol worship in your family because he said it clearly to you. How can he, there is no other way that he will say it again because it's very clear. He said it. He did not sugarcoat it. He did not try to make it so that you, you will say, oh, uh, maybe God don't want me to feel bad. He said it in a way that you will be able to understand what he means. He said it in a way that you will know that he means business. Once he said what he has said, he said it in that way. Okay? So you will know what he means when he say that. So what I came to tell you right now, denounce idol worship. It means, it means, it means a lot to you. It means a lot to you. It does well for you. Denounce idol worship. It means a lot for you. And you will help your children that you, you have given birth to. Maybe you have worshipped idol in your life as a childhood, but you have given birth to your children. It is not too late because your children have not started worshipping idols because they are still yet innocent. So that spirit in your family is still studying them, how they will come and where, from which angle they will enter their life to begin to amplify that I have been a, 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 a deity in this family for a very long time. So right now, I want you to know that uh, you came and you met me here. So before it's too late, you started that idol worship and your children are born. The spirit have not started manipulating things in the mind of your children to make them to become idol worshipers like you. You stand up in the gap and denounce it. So tonight, at my main night prayer, we are going to be making a prayer point denouncing idol worship. And I come to tell you right now and saying that, Father God, you will hear me. You will listen to me. Any member, any worshiper that is watching me, you will listen to me and you will put your hands up and say, God, if at any point in my, in my life I have, been, I have worshipped idols or newly and newly to myself, Jesus, I stand right now and I denounce idol worship in my life. I caught it short. I come against it. If my mother, my father, my great grand has worshipped idols, I come against it in Jesus' name. I will not have nothing to do with paying obedience to serpents in the sea. I will have nothing to do with worshiping trees in the middle of the forest. I will have nothing to do with celebrating money. I will have nothing to do with worshiping animals in the bush. I will have nothing to do with worshiping my husband, worshiping my wife. I will have nothing to do with worshiping success in my life and putting it above every other thing. I will have nothing to do with worshiping the approval of men over my life. I am denouncing idol worship that it will end here with my family. It will end here in my generation. And my children will not be partakers of the mess that I got myself involved in Jesus' name. So I want you guys to say that. And I want you guys to declare it. Declare it. Let the world know that you mean what you're saying. Let the world know that they, they, you mean exactly what you're saying. And w w once you battle up, because I'm going to battle up, once you battle up, let the enemy know that the time is real. Like I'm serious with you. I'm not here to play. I'm here to send you a message. So I hope you get my message. That is what I want you to be telling the enemy. I hope you get my message. I am not here to joke. 
I am no longer partaker of an idol worshiping generation. Because when, when I did those things, I was a child. When I did those things, when I was a child, the scripture say, I behaved as a child when I was a child. Now that I'm old, I shall behave in a, a very macro in a Christian way. So I want you to know that. I want you to understand this message very well, that this message is for you, that God gave me this message for you. And I don't want you to take it lightly. There is none of us right now that will put their hands up and say, I don't worship idols. I am not an idol worshiper. You did not go to the sea to worship the serpent, yes. You did not go to the sea. You did not go to the forest to worship the standing tree, yes. You did not go to the tree, to the forest, to worship the animal, yes. You did not go in your village to worship the spoon, yes. But you worship material possessions. You worship the car you drive. You worship the money you have. You worship the thing you have. You worship the approval you have, the approval of others on your life. You worship it. What people will think about you. And if they don't think well about you, you are going crazy. And if they don't see you to be this person, you, you want to take a suicide to kill yourself. You are worshiping the approval of people. You want to be approved by people. Not trying to be approved by your God that created you. In his image. Because I remember scripture said in Genesis that when he created everything, he said, he looked at it and said, wow, this is good. It's beautiful. He saw it. So you happen to be part of that creation. So you are beautiful and you are good. You, he looked at you and said, wow, this, uh, everything that I created is beautiful and good. So there is no need that you will be worshiping idol. Some of you, you have the audacity, the, the temerity, like you go to the, 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 the extent of uh, going to a friend and saying, my husband said I'm ugly, I'm not pretty, so I want you to carry me somewhere, take me somewhere where I will, I will go and take some libation from some people, some things that will rub my face. Whenever he see me, I will be looking beautiful in his eyes. You are worshiping idols. Why? God created you, created you the way you are. Accept your creation, accept the way that you are and give him the glory. Why are you showing him this much ingratitude? I myself, I can say and put my hands up, I'm a victim of idol worship because there have been times in my rising in fame, in rising in, in musical career, we were celebrating, we were celebrating the success. We were always celebrating success and we were always celebrating the approval of people, what they think about you and what they don't think about you and what they say and how you should carry your weight and how your teeth should be looking and how your eyes should be looking. I am a victim of all those things. So nobody can put their hands up and say, I am not a victim of idol worship. All you need to do at the end of my message is to denounce, is to denounce, denounce idol worship. And I beg of you, let it end with you. Decide that this idol worship will end with me. And stand up and do the needful. The need for confess your sins. Confess the sins of your father. Confess the sins of your mother. Confess your sins and ask God to start new in your generation. Because scripture indicated you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. So a chosen generation that you are, would you allow Satan to come and carry coats? carry vests and carry skin tights and be walking around and bouncing around in your generation? Excuse me? Will you allow Satan to come in your generation now? And the, 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 that spirit from your mother village to come in your generation now and say, I am a deity of this family. Her, her sons belong to me. Her daughter belongs to me. I shall marry them and they shall not have good marriages. I shall marry their, their daughters and their daughters shall not marry soon. I shall marry their sons and their sons will not be able to work. Be having a good life. My God, let it end with you. Can you, can you do that for me? I love you. And I'm telling you what God told me to tell you. Let it end with you. There is something inside of you that is telling, telling you, yes, she's right. And she's telling you the right thing. Some of us must have worshiped idols out of ignorance. And you are not to be blamed for that. 
Some of us have worshiped idols out of ignorance because we were brought up in culture where we knew nothing out of the box. So sometimes, like example, if I grew up in a village where everybody wore nothing but they were walking around naked, I would think it's a normal life to walk around naked anywhere I go. Because that was a tradition I was brought up in. I was brought up to know that walking around naked is not a problem. Because I saw everybody surrounding me walking naked. But once I come to a world where people are wearing coats, I begin to ask myself, what is wrong with them? Why are they wearing these things? What is wrong? Until I get educated. That is why the scripture said the lack of knowledge that people perish. So when the knowledge begins to enter, you know. You said, the woman of God, she said to me, when the knowledge begins to enter, you will know that, okay, something is not right. And once something is not right, you do the needful. That is the needful I came to remind you of. The love of God is supersedes any other, any other love. The love of God supersedes any other love. The love of God supersedes any other love. And that is what we need to crave. That is what he gave to us. So that's what we need to carry and have. Not, not, not the approval of men, not the approval of some babalawo, not the approval of the tree, not the approval of the mountain, the approval of water, approval of river goddesses. They means nothing because you know what? You have an advantage over them. What are the advantages you have over the spirits that parade themselves in your family? The advantage you have over them, I'm going to give you that secret right now. Are you ready for that secret? The advantage you have over them is the fact that your father was the creator of the things that they possess. You don't know where these spirits come from. Even all of them was created. The, the scripture said, in the beginning of things, God saw that the earth was without form. And he is a God that put things in form. So he went and he put the earth in form. Where there was darkness, he placed light. So, you have the advantage because your God created these things. So he, he, he also went ahead to say that there is power in your hands. There is power in your, your mouth to, 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 to step upon. So he gave you authority to step on scorpions and serpents and say, you are nothing to me. Yes, there are rulers in the air. Yes, there are rulers in the family. Yes, there are princes and witches and doctors of this world. But there is advantage for you. Because you have a God, and he indicated his dollars. So I don't want you to be a victim of spiritual infidelity to your God. Are you getting me? I don't want you to be a victim of spiritual infidelity to your God. Because when we are not faithful to our partners, we are not, we are, we are, we are showing the infidelity. So when we are not faithful to our God, we are committing spiritual adultery to him. Do you understand me? We are committing spiritual adultery. And we don't want that. He said it. He has done nothing to, 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 to receive such a treatment from us. He created you. He made you who you are. He gave you life. He gave you the, 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 the breath you're enjoying today. He gave you hands. He gave you eyes. He gave you the power to do anything you want to do. So why must you be unfaithful to him? Why must you show him ingratitude? There is no need at all. He gave you thousands of reasons why you don't need to be unfaithful to God. You don't need to cheat on God. I know you like to cheat, but please tell that cheating spirit, say, we are putting spite on you a little bit. Every little bit of eternity. We don't want to cheat on our God anymore. We are not cheaters. So you and those spirits that were cheating my mother, you were cheating with my mother, you were cheating with my father, this ends now. My God deserves my, my totality. He deserves my worship. He deserves my, my, my utmost, my utmost uh, submission and dedication. That is what you should be saying to those gods of your families and to those gods, those money. You know, even when you love money, you are working. Make time out and go to church. Don't idolize money that you work and work and work and you don't even go to service. Yes, the church is in your heart. Okay, watch some kind of a operation program. You know, just dedicate that Sunday to God in your home, stay with your family, or turn on the TV and watch somebody preaching to you. Don't, don't, don't idolize money to the point where your, your, your children don't know they have a father. 
Don't idolize, don't worship idol. Idolize money to the point where your, your wife don't know she has a husband. Don't idolize money to the point where your husband don't know he has a wife. Do not idolize money, material things, to the point where your loved ones, you will lose them. And then you live in regret. So with that being said, I am about to go. I've kept you for a long time. So I'm about to go. But I'm going to give you the scripture. What is the scripture I want, to, I want us to look at? We are looking at the book of Exodus. We looked at Exodus 20 and the beginning part of it. Okay? And I just said, for some of you that just coming on, the modern day, modern day, yes, you might not be going in the bush. You might not be going, you might not be going in the oceans to worship there. You might not be going in the in the in the in the bush to worship the animals there. You might not be going in the rivers banks to worship the serpents there. You might not be going to in the bush to worship the rocks that, that are standing. You might not be going in the bush to worship the trees that are standing. But in modern day, you worship your marriage, you worship your success, you worship your, the approval of human being over your life. You worship what? You worship a, a, a money. And I want to point, I want to really stick my finger on this before I even read this scripture before I leave you. I want to put my finger on the fact that many people are victim and they idolize the approval of others in their life. You don't need the man, human being to approve you before you can be approved. God's approval is what you need. You can appreciate somebody for adding and, and making suggestions to your life, but do not allow a negative approval or somebody have a toe in your in your in your personal life. Once when I'm trying, what I'm trying to say to you is, I can say to you that hey, oh, uh, Persia, you 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 don't sing well. I would like you to sing this way. You don't sing like other people out there. Okay, I do appreciate your opinion. Um, may God bless you. Because some people have things to say to people, but they don't voice it out. I really say thank you for the courage you took up to tell me how you feel about how I sing. Thank you. But don't go and say, hey, oh my God, I'm not a good singer. She said, I don't know how to sing. He said, I don't know how to sing. Oh, I got a bad voice. Oh God, I shouldn't be going anywhere again. I'm a failure to sing in ministry. I'm not a good person. I'm a, I'm a failure in my ministry. No, I'm a failure in my personal life. No then you are idolizing them as a human being. You are idolizing because you want to be approved by everybody. Not everybody can be approved. Now you cannot be approved by everybody. Can you get me? Listen to me before I even read this. I'm even getting more excited talking to you. You cannot be liked by everybody. Do you understand? If everybody likes you, that means God is not working in your life. I'm serious. Because once God is working in your life, their grace will show. The enemies, you will see enemies. You will see people that dislike you for no reason. You will see people that say they don't want to be battle with you. You will see people that will even hate you for no reason. Do you know why? Because the grace, the anointing is speaking and is touching them in places that, oh my God, they don't know what to do. So they must hate you. And once you see people hating you, glorify God. Say, God, I magnify your name. I exalt your name because I see your glory. I see it. So the approval, don't idolize approval of human being to destroy yourself. Because if you allow that, you will destroy yourself in a way that, yes, I wanted to be approved by everybody. But since I'm not approved by them, I, I'm a failure. I'm not what, I'm not, I, I, I don't have what it takes. You know, I can't do this. I can't do that. And then now you become a failure. So that particular role that God has called you, that you have been amplifying, you have been magnifying his work, you have been doing the best that you could. Okay? So I just want to encourage you on that. Now, let us read this before I get out of your presence because 12 o'clock is coming. I'm going to do my bombarding. I'm not getting, I'm not, I'm not missing my 12 o'clock prayer tonight. Okay. Now, now, Let's read this scripture, Exodus 20. And I'm reading the beginning. It said, and God spoke all these words. I am the Lord, your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make 
For any yourself, an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below, you shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, I am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sins of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. But showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. I just want to read this last verse of that to you. Did you hear what he said? I'm jealous. I'm a jealous God. If you don't love me, you don't show me this, I will bring punishment to this and this. But then he said to you, but he said, he said, the children. He said, I, he said, but I, I am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sins of their parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to thousands of generations. Do you hear the difference? Fourth and third generation, but showing love to a thousands of generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. So I came to tell you, as I'm about to go, Show love to God at all times. Let us not always show him ingratitude. Show love to him all the time that you will benefit from what he said. He will show love to thousands of your generation because you love him. He will show love to thousands of your people because you love him. The generations and generations to come because you love him, because you show yourself to him, because you show your heart to him, because you open up yourself to him. Do you understand me? Please. Please, 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 please. I want you to know that. Don't worship idols because they will not amount to anything for you. Idols can carry you, but they won't reach you. Idols can carry you, but they will not reach you where you need to go. Idols can accompany you, but the gas will finish in the middle of the road. Idols can start your car for you, but the car will break down in the middle of the road. But God, once you are dedicated to him, once you show him the love, he's going to be with you from thousands and thousands of generations to come. And sister, my brother, don't worship marriage. How do you, you, you idolize in your marriage? Because like I said before, some of you came on, if people idolize their marriage, they expect their wife to be a, 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 a trophy wife, a perfect woman. So a woman who comes from paradise, who doesn't make mistakes, who doesn't curse, who doesn't get angry, who doesn't, you know, you, who doesn't throw things or, or yell at or taunt anybody. When people idolize their the, the, the marriage, they idolize their husbands. They think their husband should be perfect all the time. He doesn't text people. He doesn't call people. He doesn't, he doesn't say wrong things at the wrong time. So once you idolize that person to be this specific way, and it's not, then you end up to divorce. Because you came with the mind that marriage, you know, to be celebrated as something perfect. Nothing, nothing, no blemish should be there. So I want you to know how that you cannot be able to, to idolize a marriage and still keep it. You can open your mind to the fact that, okay, yes, people make mistakes this on a uh, human being that's coming from a different background. And, and this, this is a, a human being that's coming from another background. And we both are coming together. So I must consider we must work together. I must consider that every day of her life will not be happy. And every day she must consider every day of my life will not be happy too. But we must compromise and come here and meet. And, and, okay, um, we will do five things at the same time. I will, we will do you know, the same thing is, well, let us meet here. Let's compromise here. You need to understand that. And that's how your marriage is going to work. But if you idolize it and say, he's supposed to be perfect, she's supposed to be perfect, you are going to be walking into the courtroom very soon and writing a divorce letter, signing divorce papers. If you idolize approval of men, like I said, you are going to end up not following your dreams. What you really love to do and people will, will start talking things in your head and because you care about what they say, so you, you, you draw back and you forget about the core, you forget about, and you start to, you got to go to them. They will tell you what you must do to be able to do this, to be able to, no. Then you are not by to, you are not about to answer the call that God has given you. You are still gonna be, you know, in the setback stage. 
Once you idolize, uh, uh, what do I call it? Success. Success gets to your head. I mean, you are already successful. You have money. People you are expecting now, even yourself to become an idol. People should worship you. You don't bring yourself down like the Bible said, we should humble ourselves. Some people are asking, Mr. Merlin, why do you always come? Why you don't carry yourself? You are an artist. I'm like, this is what the scripture said. We must humble ourselves and he will lift us up. I don't have to carry myself like this because there is anointing and I know what I carry. So I don't have to carry myself like this because God already carried me like that spiritually. So I want you to do the same thing. Don't allow success to get to your head. And you, you, you just look it up there. You don't think that one day something drastic will happen and you could probably calm down. Once you calm down, you have no savings in your account. Once you calm down, you have no money. You have no backup plan because you were successful. You kept yourself up there. You didn't want to be battled with certain people because you didn't want to be battled with certain people. Now you have no friends. You end up homeless because nobody will take you. Because once you have something, you never thought about anybody. When things were working for you, you never thought about anybody. I just want to tell you, God loves you and I love you. And I love you too. Um, that is why I came today with this message. Denounce idol worship so that God can be glorified in your life, okay? May God bless you. Please, 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 please share this video. And I want to take this time to share the good news with you. If you have not heard about our online women's ministry, the prayer movement is online women's ministry, I want to take this time, beautiful, to tell you about it. We are women that God has put together to to amplify his word, to echo his word, to make a difference. Women from different, different ministry, singing ministry, praying ministry, perfecting ministry, pastor ministry. And we are just under one umbrella, just praying together and holding it and finding young women out there so they can be able to, to, um, to discover their God-given purpose. So if you are that woman and you're interested in joining us, please do email me doormerlin at gmail.com and I will get back to you or you can easily contact me on Facebook. I'm, I, I, I can text you back. God bless you and I love you. Have a wonderful time and it was nice being with you. Share this video. Let everyone be blessed.